Okay, everyone, our ninth and final exercise in the chest caving fixing progression is the barbell back squat, because I'm guessing everyone is here to fix their barbell back squat. And today, instead of a barbell, I don't want to go back in the garage. I have a pool cue that's going to serve as our barbell. First, quick recap. So we, we unlocked our lower back. We increased some of our uh, core mobility first and foremost with the full rock back exercise. And then we taught our hamstrings how to turn on and our glutes how to turn on while we're laying on our back with the glute bridge exercise. And then we went to number three, which is for some reason I keep forgetting. Oh, the rocking, yes. So we were laying on our back, rocking back and forth. And we are holding those new mobile positions, that new rounded back position. And keeping that with a little bit of ab tone while we rocked back and forth. Number four, we started to progress into more of a squat pattern with the backwards bear crawl, with the hips coming up, just like squatting down, right? And then we stood ourselves up. We went to the pool table wall and did a wall supported squat. We used the wall to help us kind of sit there and just find and feel our feet flat in the ground. Find and feel our heels firmly in the ground. Find and feel our back into the wall. Find and feel a nice reach and a little bit of outer lower abs so that we can hang on to those while we're doing our squat. Remember the wall supported squat is easier than doing a normal squat because I have support. I have another point of contact on the wall. And so that was why we did that fifth, but then we needed to stand up. We needed to take the crutches away. He said while holding a pool cue has a crutch. We need to take the crutches away and get you on your feet. And so what we wanted to do is load our hip, but we didn't want to just throw you into squatting with two legs. We wanted to see if you could do it one side at a time. And so what we did was we did a split squat like this and we had you reach across your ankle and tap the outside of your heel just like that. We had to try to see if you could maintain those abs, find those hamstrings again during a single leg activity. And then we increased the demands and we made you lunge into the movement. So it's the same kind of movement, but now we have more gravity to oppose. We've let your body weight start to accelerate towards the ground and then you catch it and then you stand back up. And then we moved finally to bilateral movements. We, well, I guess we had already done plenty of bilateral movements, but we moved bilateral on your feet, normal looking squat. We grabbed a dumbbell and we held it in front of your body as a counterweight. See, this little barbell even works for that. I could reach it out and that makes it work really well. Uh, We did a goblet squat. Okay, and we used that counterweight to shift you back, to help you find and feel those abs while you're doing these squats, to help you find and feel those hamstrings, those glutes, to help you sit back into the right position, to help keep you from falling forward, to help you oppose gravity with your anti-gravity muscles, your hamstrings, your glutes. And we need all of those things because otherwise we put the pressure where you're used to putting it, which is your mid back. And that's why your chest is caving, right? So you'll notice I'm not talking a lot about chest caving here. I don't want it to cave, but what I want to do is I want to give you some directives. I want to give you something to do about it. I don't want to just say, Hey, don't do that, which sometimes is fine. Sometimes there's a very appropriate cue and I use it all the time verbatim. Don't do that. (laughs) Um, But what I want to do is I want to give you something to, you know, after doing this exercise and trying this cue, I want to give you some other stuff that you can keep doing that'll maybe make it easier for you in the long run. So that's my long winded introduction, our long winded summary of this nine exercise uh, progression that we've done on fixing the chest cave. Last one, exercise number nine, the barbell back squat. Make sure your hands aren't too close together. Make sure they're not too relaxed and wide. Find some sort of, again, middle ground is what we're looking for. I'm going to turn so you can see me a little bit better. Again, something slightly wider than shoulder width, maybe. Squat on down. Make sure you're not shifting forward 
and shift back into your squat. So normally I'm gonna tell people to just start that way. And if you find that you're not getting what we want, you're not able to feel your abs and hang on to them throughout the lift, which I could do it pretty well there, maybe you just need to set up a little bit more deliberately. So make sure you're not leaning back, arching back, tuck your hips. <sighs> Exhaling, that always helps. That gives you a little corset of abs here to help support you. And make sure you're looking forward as you squat. Oh, I'm still kind of falling forward a little bit. Oh, that's better. The reason I'm falling forward is I just did a nice squat workout that you may have watched about a week ago with my sister Maddie in the garage. And all the muscles that I'm supposed to be using are very tired now. So, again, I feel my abs, I feel a little bit of hamstrings when I shift back far enough. Oh yeah, there we go. And then try to even it out, push evenly through each foot. My feet are staying flat. You'll notice my toes aren't coming up. You'll notice my chest isn't caving because that's what we're trying to fix here. One last point to make, as he, <laughs> he said with his staff in hand, um, one last point to make, oftentimes the chest cave isn't just an, a deficit of mobility or stability. Sometimes it's just too much weight, okay? So keep your ego in check. You can always progress back up, but what I want is I want every rep to look clean. I know your heavy reps don't look clean, but if you do a heavy, dirty rep, Every time you work out, you're not training for strength, you're testing your strength, okay? You don't want to train into bad patterns, you want to train into good patterns. And even if you're not feeling that tired, like if I start doing this and I'm collapsing towards the end, even though my legs aren't tired and I'm just not able to shift myself into the position that I need to be in, even if I'm not tired, say it one more time, then it's enough, okay? We're working up to a technique maximum weight, not to a maximum weight, okay? There's a difference. When I lose technique, especially when I lose a lot of technique, I need to stop, okay? Keep your ego in check. That's been very hard for me, I say this, as a loving father who's made mistakes to my children here. I've made them my own. <laughs> I don't have kids right now, or I don't, whatever. We're not gonna talk about that. I say that because I've made those mistakes, right? I've not kept my ego in check and I've used too much weight and I've, you know, I want to get stronger. I've wanted to get so, so much stronger that I just throw away everything that I know and I, I just push myself as much as I can. And sometimes that's not what you need. Sometimes that is what you need and you need to know how to push yourself and how to, you know, overcome adversity and stuff like that. I want you to be uncomfortable in the gym, but it doesn't have to be during squatting. So you can do squatting with an appropriate weight and you can find that your technique is going away and you can find that you're trying to um, re-ingrain re a good technique. Um, and what you might need to do is stop before you get tired from squatting and then do something else. Maybe you go back to the uh, glute bridge we were doing. Maybe you go over to the leg press machine. Just knock out a bunch of reps. Hopefully you got one if you don't have one. You could do a hack squat. You could do a goblet squat. And you could use that as a loading implement. And you could teach yourself how to have endurance and how to deal with fatigue and still get a nice training effect while you're repatterning what you need to pattern. Okay, so that is the bigger picture here of retraining our squatting pattern to fix our chest cave. Hopefully you found this series helpful. If you did, please leave a comment below, maybe on all of the videos, so that I know what you're getting and what you're not getting, so that I know what you like and what you don't like. Because if you don't like it, I don't want to keep making these. But the only way I know is if you tell me, okay? We're all about open communication here in this 
relationship, said your father. <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe I said that online. Um, that's all I got for you. Good luck with your squatting. Hopefully your chest stops caving. If it doesn't, we can uh, try some other stuff. <laughs>